Please listen carefully. Well, hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimus Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. We're part of the team behind the Optimus Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day. In order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day, to help us all get focused on what's going right in the world. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, binge-worthy, almost at a million readers in the last two weeks-worthy podcast. (laughs) Today is Friday, the 7th of January, 2022. Hi. Hi. How's it going? I'm good. How are you, Summers? I am uh, I'm good. I am excited. I am a little overwhelmed. I am neck deep in imposter syndrome. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. What are we to, what's happening, Chrissy? What's happening with well, this amazing Optimus Daily Update situation? For whatever reason, 2022 decided that it wanted to be optimistic in the world. I think the the January everybody's resolution is to not pay attention to all the garbage and the disruptions and the this and the that and rather tune in to something that lifts your aura, your energy yeah. a little bit and listen to us and go to the Optimist Daily website and actually tune in. And I feel like we're riding the wave and I love and it. Steve, no, I have we're been... not riding the wave, Summers. We are igniting the wave igniting the wave or we are on a path to world elevation exactly Uh, that's what we are about christy and i have been doing this for a long time right not we've been we've both been in the business of positive news making positive storytelling the optimist daily has worked very hard for a very long time to stay committed to its core values of delivering solutions focused news and Christy and I literally started this podcast as a mental health check-in right. this is our social- and I during the pandemic, right? <laughs> and my son was one of our first editors. Christy, I don't you know if you remember back when my oh, son, yeah. when, I remember. when I decided we could no longer do the editing and my son, who was like stuck at home during the pandemic, I said... Well, you paying him like twenty dollars a day to do it, exactly. or something. Exactly, you paid him twenty dollars a day, and he sat across from me on the couch <laughs> and edited the show. And last night we were in the kitchen, and uh, he's home from college, and we were. I said, you know, just so you know, there were like nine hundred and eighty people on the pod just now listening, and he is so excited for us. And it just it took a moment for me to realize how many amazing people have participated in this journey to get us to where we are, and. Perhaps it feels like 2022, we set out our goals, and then within the first week, we just knocked our goals to smithereens, right? (laughs) We're just leaps and bounds. But there are so many people who have helped us along the way and who have been on this Optimist Daily journey with us. And I just, you know, I posted on my LinkedIn, but just like major shout out to the whole team and everyone for getting us here, because it feels really good to know that the rest of the world is tuning in for inspiring, uplifting, optimistic news. It feels I'm good. giving you a little high five, uh, an, an energy high five right now. <laughs> energy high five or like a Skype high five, although the <laughs> Skype emojis are weird right now because they're still like reindeer. Now, it's Friday and we always just do a quick touch base on what we're doing for the weekend or good things that are coming ahead. What's your weekend looking like? Well, I started with a little tickle in my throat today, so I took a COVID test, so I'm negative, <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> you are the most tested woman in America. I know. I, I just really, really don't want to infect anybody. So Wait, you I just know that you're clear so you can do things in this world. Right, right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't like to make plans anymore because they get <laughs> canceled so often. I'm in the go with the flow kind of thing. That's what I'm about. (laughs) What about you? Do you have plans? Uh, So I do. Saturday morning will be the last day that I have all members of my family together until probably spring break or Christmas, right? So we are going to go out to breakfast, the five of us, and we are going to ask some random stranger at the place we have breakfast to take our family picture. 
And my goal is to get a warm, happy, totally casual family picture so we can send out Valentine's cards <laughs> because I clearly missed Christmas and New Year's cards. And then uh, Saturday afternoon, we're going to go puppy that might be our ah, new puppy. your potential new family like, exactly our potential new family That's member right. and i i was yes. joking with the big kids that by the time they're both back from school at the end of this year i'm gonna have like 11 new animals <laughs> because that's how i'm dealing with the fact that all the big kids are gone and it's just me and the little one yeah so i think we're gonna we're gonna do family valentine's day card picture taking over breakfast and puppy visiting on saturday and then sunday I think we're going to get back to back to swim practice and soccer practice for my daughter. So back to being soccer mom again, I think. And All right. Really done with the holidays. So it's going to be a good weekend. It's going to be busy. It's going to be family. And I'm certainly going to be reading The Optimist Daily. And I'm certainly going to be reading our Optimist View on Sunday. But today, we should talk about the stories on The Optimist Daily that inspire us right now. Okay, I'll go first. I'll go first because I am so excited about my, my <laughs> Please do. My headline reads, your future rooftop could be made out of easy to install solar shingles. And I just, I just am so excited by this idea and by the innovation and common senseness of it. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. The future of roofs, it's very likely that they will move to becoming solar generation sources, sites. And that is... Uh, because the, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? You know, there are... 200,000 to 300,000 homeowners who install solar panels, but there are 20 times more than that. There's 5 million households that replace their roofs every year. So if only 10% of those 5 million households replace their roofs with solar shingles, let me explain. Let me, I am getting ahead of myself. Gaff Energy, which is a spinoff of the largest roof maker in North America, has recently developed a solar panel which is actually a roof tile. It's a new design called Timberline Solar, and it consists of solar cells that are built into standard roof shingles. So it looks just like or very similar to a regular shingle. It's very durable, and all you need to install it is a nail gun. You don't need to build those racks on your rooftop, which to some people's aesthetic taste, not mine, but to uh, some people, they find that ugly. Believe it or not, some homeowners associations have boundaries against it, have like, right. say you can't right. do it. Actually, recently in Texas, they outlawed home HOAs from not letting people do solar. Right. But through many places in the world yeah. or in the country, you're not even allowed to do solar right. because it looks do, different. Because it looks different and that gets classified as ugly. Now, it is clunky. I, I will give them that, that you when you have those rooftop solar panels that are mounted on racks it can look a little clunky and this it is, is extra material and it's right? extra it's materials and it's more expensive and it takes qualified installer there's the the rack you, i don't know it's extra stuff this is a simplification represents tremendous potential martin de bono who's the president of gaff energy which is the manufacturer of these panels is talking about how they came up with it. And it, it sort of was a no-brainer to them because they are a roofing company. And they're watching the solar panels going up all over the place. But they have the same exact technology in 2020 that they had in, in 1990. So you go, hey, there's some room for innovation here. And they got their engineers together and they designed these very ingenious solar shingles, which are easy to install. Uh, and that's one of their main selling points the gaff energy solar shingles can be super quickly installed instead of taking several weeks right now the way that solar roofs are installed it's only it takes about two days for an entire roof to be covered so mm -hmm. and these shingles are you know they're waterproof they're fireproof they're durable enough for workers to walk on them if they need to installers can just put them on they're just like the same roof shingles only you also generate energy and exactly uh, I just find this really exciting and I hope I could get it on my roof because I have a small weird shaped roof that doesn't really work for the traditional solar panel arrays. Mm -hmm. And if I could get this kind of a solar, when we replace our roofs in 15 years, maybe we can get solar shingles and I can now run my electric car based on my rooftop. Based solar. on your roof. 
So we are scoping out adding another building to our property. So it's basically going to be a garage plus, you know, some workspace. And we have been talking about ways that we were going to do solar and, and the rules around solar in our own HOA, which fortunately Texas said no more with. But I am really excited about this because now when we design the building, we're just going to design solar straight into the roof, right? I, That's yeah. just, and these panels look enough like the existing roof structure in our own home that aesthetically it has a lot of continuity. And I think this is really exciting. And I love it when design gets involved with energy tech Mm -hmm. and they make really appealing things that come together. Mm -hmm. It's that combination of multiple parts of your brain that we all get really excited and invigorated by. So, right. Yes. And electricity cost savings can actually pay for the cost of buying a new roof mm-hmm. is that's the goal Yeah, in, in this. So and anyway, it's a exactly. win, win, win. One yes. of those solutions that just makes me my heart sing. And speaking that's, of heart, speaking singing, of yeah. heart singing <laughs> and brains working in different paths, perfect transition. My headline is about how the brain works and how music and language play in the same place in the brain. The headline reads, this is your brain on music. Now, music does something to humans like no other animal, right? Cats don't really dance and get tap their tails to tunes, but the rhythm gets in our bodies and we can't help but move along with bass or sing our heart out to that catchy chorus. Now, scientists at the University of Tokyo wanted to uncover exactly what is going on in our brain to cause this phenomenon. Led by Professor Kuniyoshi Sakai, who studies language through the lens of neuroscience, science, he used the Suzuki method, which is a musical training technique based on the ideas of natural language acquisition. And his team explored neurological aspects common to both language and music. In the field of neuroscience, it's pretty well established that there are areas of the brain that deal specifically with language and even more specialized regions of that correspond with different parts of language processing, such as grammar or syntax. They wondered if under training with this particular method, it might lead to activity in those areas, not when using language, but when engaging with music. Now, I love this story for a number of reasons. I had a traumatic brain injury, and I lost access to language for a period of time. And in relearning language, I actually listened to classical music. So I know this is true, and I know this is real. That was a very soothing thing for me in Mm -hmm. finding a path back to language. Now, how this experiment worked is they enrolled 98 secondary school students, dividing them among their musical capabilities, and really it's musical exposure. It wasn't like these are great singers and these are bad singers. It's just who's more exposed to music. And under the Suzuki method, they used MRI imaging, I guess magnetic resonance imaging, 3D models of their brains were created when they were asked to listen to certain pieces of music and identify errors in the music. So they're hearing it and they're basically engaging in it if you hear someone say the wrong word or hear the wrong note being played. The results came through that showed the most musically experienced displayed more activity on the right hand side of the brain, which is associated with melody and emotion, but they also all showed activity in the areas of the left side of the brain for grammar center. So the more in, you know, the more musically exposed or on the right side of the brain, But everybody, when listening to music, was activating on this language center. So I think this is very fascinating because I love brain science. I love understanding how we connect and the different neuropathways that can get you to experiencing something. And what I think is really valuable about this is that we're reiterating music exposure can develop other areas of the brain, like increased music exposure is very valuable, but even just some music is good for everybody's brain. So listen to your favorite tune, dance in the car, dance on, dance under your solar roof. Uh, (laughs) But I just, I love this story. And, you know, I always get very excited about the brain stories. Yeah. 
you're big, big on brain. I'm <laughs> super big on brain. And I got to tell you, you know, brains, brains sort of make the world go round. So speaking well, of more brains and <laughs> science, a couple other headlines. I've got scientists create a new magnesium isotope. U.S. twins delivered minutes apart end up born in different years. This is always a fun time of year, right? When we have the like babies born, last baby born and first baby born in, in the various years. Who would have thunk they'd, they'd be uh, siblings? <laughs> yeah, twins. Exactly. Minutes apart, different years. Science fact. <laughs> this one's great. The science fact reasons to eat more arugula. The aforementioned son at the beginning of this podcast is super anti-arugula, so ah, I will forward, so this forward him that article. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What else do we have, Christy? Well, there's the FGF1 hormone could offer a new and improved diabetes treatment and alternative to insulin. Saving America's citrus fruit trees. Ooh, they didn't realize they need to be saved. Very, mm-hmm. very interesting. Puffer fish inspired houses could help a lake village cope with sea level rise. This is another design inspired by nature solution. Check that out. It's pretty cool. And an article to answer Summer's question, all you need to know about winter bird feeders and how to keep your flying friends happy in the cold months of the year. That and more can be found on theoptimistdaily.com. Thank you so much for listening today to the Optimist Daily Update. Yesterday, we had a little snafu, which was pretty funny. No, I guess it was Wednesday, right? It was Wednesday it was that Wednesday. we had that. Yes, Wednesday. <laughs> but um, it, it's okay because it, you can see that we're just human beings and we just, we're, we don't do much editing, but we do do a little editing yes. on, on the, our podcast. For the, several, for the several hundred people that got to hear it, the unedited version <laughs> came up and it wasn't that much different. It just like... We were we were very worried that some of our less professional banter might have been released, but it wasn't. So we were Don't all worry. good. Don't worry. <laughs> Other than that, and even with that, we promise to keep sharing positive solution-based stories about real topics that are happening in the real world with ideas on how you can participate in it and help sh- be ensure that it's changing in the way that we all want it to change. We promise to keep covering current events with accurate, legitimate sources and offering you the information we all need to help chart new paths for all of us. If you have not already, please, please, please consider becoming an emissary on TheOptimistDaily.com. What is an emissary, you ask? Well, an emissary is part of our reader-funded community who gives as much or as little as they can, as little as $5 a month, to support reader-funded, independent, positive, solution-based journalism. You guys, come be part of the solution, changing consciousness, addressing our world's biggest challenges with a problem-solving mindset, and help us keep the Optimist Daily free to all who need it, which is everybody, supported by those who can. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. We'll see you on the social media channels over the weekend. Look for pictures of my new puppy, and we'll be back on Monday with more solutions. 